All right, so um, I'm going to discuss uh, mentorship and um, uh, our candidate members, uh, mentoring them today. Uh, we're going to cover uh, criteria for membership and maturity, levels of membership and how they uh, work together in a workflow. Um, and then maybe some information that is not so pertinent to, uh, to our existing members, but more for candidates. What are the typical hurdles, pitfalls and good practices that one could identify? And in the case of these hurdles and pitfalls, what remedies are available to us as, as the WBS? And then if there's time, maybe uh, some new ideas for discussion offline. So um, our membership uh, at the moment is of course uh, focused on network and regular members. There are also uh, associate members and partners uh, in our portfolio, but we've recently introduced the concept of a candidate member um, that uh, is not yet ready to go through a process of certification but has already expressed an interest uh, to join the WDS. And that's really what we're focusing on in this uh, presentation. And what we're advocating for is that WDS and its members could actually take a much more active role in helping these candidate members to become full members of, of WDS. Uh, it's worth pointing out when it comes to certification that there is a subtle difference between what WDS does and what Cortra Seal does that formally certifies repositories. Um, CTS is largely <laughs> focused in the orange arrow on verifying the level of compliance with uh, certification criteria that was developed in conjunction with WDS and reflects to some extent the, the legal uh, the, the statutory uh, community norms and practices and procedures that um, apply uh, to data repositories in broad terms. Now, the reason we have to separate this is that WDS could in time, for instance, add certification of FAIR uh, to its membership criteria, but that would not necessarily be uh, uh, certified by CTS, even though it could be. So one has to separate the idea of arriving at what the community requires as a, as a well-managed and trustworthy uh, repository from the potential mechanisms for certification. Okay, um, now when we talk about membership maturity, the core trust seal has different levels of certification. The ones that really matter to us are number three and number four, where uh, repositories are either assessed as being in, in an implementation phase or uh, they have uh, essentially implemented the, the criteria and the guidance fully. Now that corresponds more or less quite uh, directly to what is called the, um, the maturity model um, for uh, systems development, where they have levels of performance and where the lowest level of performance, of course, is ad hoc, where coffee and midnight hours play a large role in delivery or uh, uh, provision of services but we hope that people will uh, become more mature repositories over time to a point where they have standardized their operations, they have implemented them, they are managing them, and then a level beyond essentially what Core Trust Seal is looking at where we are properly measuring and optimizing uh, the things that we do. So that's the, the sort of broad uh, framework for assessment of repositories. And of course, our candidate members could be uh, at level, anything from uh, level one to three or four, uh, depending on the situation for these criteria. If we look from experience with a review, both in Cortra Seal and prior to that in the World Data System, um, then there are quite a number of considerations in respect of certification that candidate members might find useful starting out. Uh, the first is that, of course, it's not a requirement to achieve level four compliance for all criteria. 
provided that there are some clear ideas about how to address the shortfalls. And the second point that uh, many candidates overlook is that evidence for all of the claims that they make uh, should be publicly accessible uh, and in cases where it cannot be because it's a confidential agreement, then some form of excerpt must be provided. And of course, in many cases, uh, English is not necessarily the language in which this evidence is available, but then to, to aid with the assessments and English uh, summaries generally required. So those are general considerations. Um, then we find that there are typical hurdles to certification for prospective or younger repositories. The first is that they, they face the task of developing procedures, policies, and applicable standards, uh, meeting the criteria, of course. But in my experience also, they find it difficult often to define a program for increased maturity over time and to maintain momentum. It's often dependent on a single individual that has to be there for the full time uh, or else uh, the, the effort loses steam. And then of course, obtaining institutional support and sustainable funding is uh, a problem even for well-established repositories. I'm listing a whole lot of issues and pitfalls in terms of certification that I'm not gonna go through in detail. Um, the first is that uh, there are six of them uh, dealing with institutional focus and the level of curation that's performed and the use of technical repository service providers or outsourced uh, services. This is something that has to uh, get some attention and Court Seal, of course, is engaging with the community at the moment to determine whether amended certification will be required to address, uh, to accommodate some of the technical uh, service providers. Um, it's very difficult for many to develop evidence of how their workflow is implemented. So it's one thing to, uh, to write up your workflows and procedures, but it's a little more difficult to prove that you are actually following them and that there are ways of making sure that these workflows are actually executed properly. Um, many repositories have a clear, uh, lack a clearly defined uh, end user community, which of course is, is the critical part of uh, our domain specific repository environment. And in many cases, they manage a, a whole set of data holdings, not all of uh, which will qualify for certification. So one has to define the boundary of what you are certifying quite, quite uh, clearly. Continuity planning is often a, a huge problem. Uh, three aspects of that, business continuity, what happens when uh, we have a, a problem in terms of our infrastructure, for instance, uh, in technical continuity, and then what happens if our funding runs out in terms of access and preservation. So those things are generally not well defined in, in uh, repositories that are just starting out. And then uh, quality of metadata and provision of domain specific data services and reusability is often overlooked as a major factor uh, that uh, makes uh, a, re a repository useful to its end user community and certifiable as such. Okay, so the remedies that uh, one can look at from WDS and its uh, memberships perspective is of course the mentoring system that we are proposing, where at least even if it just means participation in regular progress <coughs> meetings to put some indirect pressure and give some guidance uh, for candidate repositories that would already help a lot, I think. Um, provide access to and clarifications in respect of standard procedures and public evidence. I think it will help a lot to provide letters of support to the funding uh, sources and the hosting institutions of these repositories and then to help them with informal reviews of their applications to CTS before they submit them. Um, I've done this now in one or two cases and I think there are some obvious corrections in, in both of those cases where um, a lot of to and fro could have been saved 
uh, or could be saved uh, prior to submission. Um, WDS, I think, will, can easily help by matching candidate repositories with one or more mentors in the more established um, uh, repositories to provide a schema for the development of evidence and materials. I'm giving an example over leaf and to maybe start working on consolidated guidance resources, but that's something that's also open for discussion with a scientific committee in terms of our future focus. And then I, we've heard a lot uh, during the course of today about the need to potentially continue with uh, webinars and workshops of people that have similar interests and experience. And I think this will be especially useful to candidate uh, members to, um, to maybe attend all of them and start getting a sense of the level of performance and maturity and uh, standards that apply in well-established uh, environments. So we're giving some examples, but there of course might be more. Um, I've also included a method for structuring response content in terms of the level of detail and what it applies to, whether it's policy level, procedural or technical, and uh, whether it deals with the, the three main aspects of, and how it deals with the three main aspects of certification. And then there's also suggested documentation scope of the minimum evidence that needs to be uh, available. This is my, my own checklist at the moment, but it will be very helpful if we can start discussing this and making it into a widely uh, useful resource and potentially provide links to documentation and procedures that have already been tested against the core trust seal requirements uh, and can be reused by the community. So I think um, we are then in our survey asking you to, to add some information about your willingness and ability to help with uh, mentoring, whether you have any open source repositories or uh, software or other kinds of resources available that you can share and whether you can serve as, uh, as mentors or sounding boards for these candidate repositories. There's some final additional ideas. Um, one that is, uh, I think, something to consider is that there is a growing emphasis on the certifiability of institutional or general purpose repositories, but of course, reusability uh, and uh, preparation for end use will suffer if uh, traditional curation is not done on those data holdings. So there might be a case to make for federated curation or providing curation as a service um, that allows generalist repositories to provide a better service. And it also cements the role and usefulness of the established uh, domain or discipline specific uh, repository. We've already mentioned the idea of developing some kind of a body of knowledge for potentially for each discipline based on the minimum evidence schema that we discussed above. And then something that I thought of uh, during our discussion is that um, it might be useful to start discussing formal curated metrics of usefulness to the community because in the open science environment, the funders of these resources are often not the beneficial users. And we need a way to count and measure the beneficial application of our efforts to present to funders in a believable and trustworthy way. So that might be something to, to also think about. And with that, um, your thoughts, please. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And I'll also be answering questions. Thank you. Hi, this is Wendy. Um, I have one thought with the um, remedies that WDS and its membership can provide under the services, WDS resources rather. Um, another resource that is just at your fingertips is trying to find analogous repositories that have already gone through the certification process that a repository that's just getting started out can look at, that they can really relate to, because that was a valuable way for us to get started and we got started a long time ago. Yeah. 
No, definitely. So I think we covered it to some extent by saying that WDS can match up Canada members with established uh, certified repositories. So I think that's certainly in, in the scope of what we are thinking and proposing. Thank you. So this has been a very fruitful uh, presentation, Vim. I do want to reiterate one point, but and unfortunately, I think we're going to have to curtail our discussion. I do encourage people to put additional comments or thoughts in the chat window. Uh, but what I'd like to say is that we really do want to do a sort of partnering or a buddy system um, whereby uh, more mature repositories could actually come alongside and provide advice and, and essentially be a resource for uh, candidate members to obtain, um, you know, be a sounding board to help them get through the certification process. So we really want to build out that map that Rory showed at the beginning of the presentation today, at the beginning of our sessions, which uh, shows large gaps in Africa, uh, South America, or really all of Latin America and in many parts of Asia uh, by increasing our membership from the global south. So with that,